So good morning. Uh, we are on our 13th lecture of uh, this uh, God Designed Family series. Uh, our title for this morning is The Maternal Influence. So two weeks ago, uh, our deacon uh, taught us about the, um, the, the duties of fathers uh, to, to lead their families and, of course, their children to the Lord. Uh, now we turn our focus to the mothers, right? Now, again, just like every lecture, uh, there's also a need for reformation when it comes to the, our understanding of the mothers, of, of their duties and responsibilities. No? Marami kasi nagsasabi na, of course, ang, 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 ang women talaga ay called to really be out of uh, their homes and live an independent life no? na malayo. At uh, sa kanyang mga anak or even sa kanyang mga husband. Now, there's no condemnation, no? Uh, walang pag uh, Christian pagdating sa mga ganung bagay. We understand the providence of God that there are scenarios that uh, that these things happen. Pero ang majority, ang, 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 ang thinking ng society ngayon ay ganun ang goal. No? Ganun na dapat ang goal ng bawat mother. No? And... and Kaya may masasabi natin that there's really a need for reformation even in this area. Sabi nga ni Nancy Wilson, in her book, The Fruit of Her Hands, the media indoctrinate us daily. Now, we probably don't even imagine it or hindi natin nare-recognize it, yung bagay na yon, that the world catechizes everyone and that includes the mothers. So, media indoctrinate us daily, referring to the women, the news berates biblical views of wives and motherhood. Popular film and entertainment programs call women to war against men and husbands. No? Uh, alam natin na uh, ang call ng feminism ngayon ay technically to be head of uh, their families whereas it's, uh, it's contrary to what God has uh, ordained. Uh, to continue, she said they exalt the modern woman and neglect or ridicule the mother at home, right? There is this uh, modern thought where people are saying na, teka, napaka hopeless naman, nasa bahay lang ang isang mother, where in fact, uh, she's actually doing something noble. Now she's doing something for her family. And of course, hindi yon naiintindihan ng mundo. No? Pero to be specific, ito yung dito kailangan may reformation. Ma-reform ang ating understanding when it comes to this. No? Again, we're not saying that mothers who are working are condemned. Again, we, we acknowledge the, the scenarios and we, ha we have to be sensitive to the providence of God if that was the scenario. But, but then again, we're really going back to what the word says. Kung paano nga ba? Paano nga ba maiintindihan ng kabataan ngayon? Ano yung pinaka-effective way for the children to know God? And God has raised her agents. No? At yun, primarily, ay ang mga mother. Of course, I can say that it's both father and the mother. But, I, but today, I want to say that merong malaking influensya ang ating mga ina. Okay? Napakalaki. Okay? Now, we have to go back to the beginning. Ano ba ang mandate sa lahat ng, technically, lahat ng women, but to be specific mothers? Now, unang-una, in creation, Eve was called to be a helper. She was called to be a help meet for Adam. Whatever Adam was to do, Eve was to be supportive of Adam. If Adam was supposed to extend Eden, Eve should be uh, beside Adam, helping Adam accomplish that task. Even in procreation, which is a task given to Adam and Eve, of course, Eve was to help Adam in that regard. Okay? Of course, uh, Adam won't be able to procreate alone. So, kailangan niya si Eve. So, pagdating sa motherhood, she is also a helper pagdating, uh, sa kanyang husband. No? Helper sa pag-procreate and helper sa pagpapalaki ng mga godly descendants. Okay? Now, again, prior to the fall, the, the, the goal of Adam and Eve was to, uh, to have many descendants. And yung mga descendants na yon are what? Godly. Okay? You don't need to educate them about God. Yung talagang lalabas na mga anak nila ay automatic na godly na. 
Okay? Because walang sin. Of course, that would be the perfect scenario, but we know that that's not what happened. Genesis chapter 3 tells us that there is a fall. Now, post-fall, nagkaroon ng curse because of what Adam and Eve did. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, now this is the curse specific doon sa motherhood ni Eve. Okay? Now, in verse 16, kaya ako nilagay na A kasi merong next clause or next phrase that that is specific naman doon sa kanyang pagiging wife. Hindi ko na yon sinama dito because we've already talked about that in the lecture of submissive wife. But now, since we are talking about motherhood, I've included the specific curse about motherhood. God said to the woman, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain, you shall bring forth children. What God is saying is that prior your sin, there was really no pain. No, if if you if you bear a child, kung ikaw ay mga anak, hindi ka masasaktan. Of course, we hindi natin hindi natin abutan yon, no? Hindi nangyari yon, so hindi natin alam kung paano yon nangyari na walang sakit pagdating doon sa ina. Pero malinaw na because of sin, there is now pain sa panganganak, but it's not just doon sa panganganak, even in the bringing forth of children, meaning. Because your sons and daughters are sinful, you will have difficulties bringing them up. Pagpapalaki. Mahihirapan ka and there will always be pain. May it be tears, sweat, or even blood. Okay? So that is post-fall. Now, Jesus Christ came. The apostles came. Christ raised up Paul And he taught us, specifically in 1 Timothy chapter 2, sa sabi ni Paul Teka, actually, pwedeng bumalik doon sa blessedness na mayroon before, bago dumating yung Paul. Pwede tayong bumalik doon sa, doon, sa, doon sa point wherein Eve can have godly descendants. And that was the, the, the goal of, technically, one of the goals of creation to extend their descent, to, to have many descendants who are worshippers of God. Paul is saying, we can go back to that time. We can reclaim the goodness. We can reclaim the blessedness of that time, of that commission that I have given the mothers. How? Paul is saying in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, yet she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. Now, does Paul mean that children can be saved kapag sila ay pinanganak sa, uh, mula sa kanilang mothers? Na automatic sila ay magiging godly descendants. Does yung ba ibig sabihin nito? Yet she will be saved through childbearing? Or it's not. Dahil hindi naman tayo naliligtas by being born the first time. Or does this mean na uh, uh, nung pinanganak si Kristo, meron kasing view na ganito pagdating sa verse na to, nung pinanganak si Kristo kay Mary, lahat ng, lahat ng kabataan, lahat ng baby na lumabas after him ay automatically saved. Of course, that's not right. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible, the, the, the Paul, the one who wrote this, Uh, tells us that you can be you are saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. What this is saying is that to, you are fulfilling the will of God through childbirth by accepting the the mother by accepting her role of motherhood that she will influence her children and of course the world. It is through the vocation of motherhood and raising children that she will fulfill God's command. It is through her bringing up. It is through her educating her children to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is the way that she is fulfilling the will of God. Sabi nga ni Philip Ryken, sa kanyang commentary on 1 Timothy, referring to that verse, childbearing is thus taken to represent a woman's calling, to be specific, the mother's. It is the feminine role par excellence. 
And therefore, it serves as a kind of shorthand for a woman's home life. The place where a woman will find her true sanctification is not in the authoritative teaching office of the church. That was the, the, the context of 1 Timothy. Na sinasabi niya na kailangang uh, tahimik. The, the women should be quiet in the church. And what he meant by that, he, they should submit to the authorities of the church, meaning that they should not have an office, a, a preaching office, a pastoral office. So the place where a woman will find her true sanctification is not in the authoritative teaching office of the church, but in the domestic sphere. Not that all women are called to be mothers, of course, but all women should embrace their feminine identity as life givers, which is biologically signified in the capacity to bear children. Uh, again, when Adam named the woman Eve, he named him after the fall. At ang pangalan ni Eve ay Eve, which means mother of all living. Meaning someone who gives life, life giver. From being a helper, now it, the, 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 the name of Eve gives the mothers a new purpose, a new meaning, na sila ay tagabigay buhay. Hindi lang through childbearing, but through spiritual uh, 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 giving of life. Of course, nangyayari yon if they uh, bring them up in the knowledge of Christ. Sabi rin ni J. Ligon Duncan in his book, and uh, book nila ni Susan Hunt, now, women's ministry in the local church, sabi, because of her rebellion, the woman became a life taker. But because of the promise of life, she became a life giver. This is more than biological. Woman's redemptive calling is to be a life giver in every relationship and circumstance. Okay? So again, a mother can reclaim the blessedness of her commission by, her, by bringing her children up to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what Paul is saying that children can be saved through childbearing by letting them know who Jesus Christ is, by teaching to them holiness, self-control, faith, and love in Christ. And so let's look at the influence of the mothers. Now, if, if, you, if you look at the back of your handouts, uh, again, you would see usually, usually, dyan ko nilalagay sa huli yung references. Uh, yung mga references na nilalagay ko dyan are basically also uh, books that I would recommend uh, everyone to read, especially mothers. Now, uh, of course, hindi natin matatakal lahat ng, lahat ng pwede maging influence ng mothers uh, sa kanyang mga anak in one lecture so i recommend reading these books so let's let's look at uh, siguro so nagbigay ako na parang ito yung pinaka uh, summary no ng 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 na influence ng isang mother sa kanyang children unang-una pagdating sa religion okay pagdating sa religion we need to uh, understand no the mothers need to understand that the home is the everyday sanctuary of religious instructions right either that is the the place where the children don't want to be uh, baka ayaw natin na lumaki ang mga bata na kinamumuhian nila ang kanilang mga tahanan because of past or history na mga pangyayari na ayaw nilang maalala ayaw natin yung mangyari sa ating mga anak god willing uh, kaya ngayon pa lang, maganda na may, may lagay natin sa ating mind that the home is the everyday sanctuary of religious instructions. This is how we instruct them about our Lord Jesus Christ. Sabi nga ni Joel Biki in his book, Parenting by God's Promises, we can look for situations in daily life that reinforce biblical teaching. We should let lessons flow naturally at the dinner table. As we walk in the woods, as we go on vacation, or as we drive our children to activities or events, it is good to search for opportunities to teach our children about God's wonderful truth in Christ Jesus. So see, that's like Deuteronomy chapter 6. Whatever we do, uh, it, it should be... 
whether we kahit nasasabi natin o nakapakita natin, uh, medyo mahirap yung ganun, right? Pero yung sinasabi sa atin ng scripture na maging aware tayo sa ating mga salita, maging aware tayo sa ating mga uh, gawa. So mo- mothers are to model for their children a continual coming to Christ both in prayer and in re- reading scripture. Uh, nangyayari sa mga tahanan that there are difficult times and it's great to see children seeing their mothers coming to Christ for grace to help in time of need. Sabi sa Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We now have access to this throne of grace because Christ is our high priest and at the same time our sacrificial lamb. That's why we can now approach his throne of grace in prayer. It's nice for a child to see his or her mother uh, doing this. No? During, of course, difficult times. But in good times, during good times, the children will see mothers go to him with thanksgiving for his mercies. And then day by day, the children will see mothers walking by faith, depending on Christ for all things. At isinasabi natin sa Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 9. No? Ang mga instructions sa, sa mga Israelites na kailangan nilang gabayan ng kanilang mga anak so that their children will know who God is. Kasi most of them ay probably hindi naabutan ang... Ay, karamihan sa kanila hindi nila naabutan yung wonders ni God, especially when He parted the Red Sea. That's why that information is very important to, uh, to pass on sa kanilang mga anak. Lagi nila yung sinasabi sa kanilang mga anak so that they would know who God is. At anong ginawa ng Diyos sa kanila? So sabi dito sa Deuteronomy 6, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So may confession dito. No? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Ito yung sinasabi ng Panginoon na sabihin nyo sa inyong mga anak. Kailangan nyo mahalin ang inyong ang Diyos. Hindi lang kayo magsasacrifice kapag kayo nagkasala, puha kayo ng sheep, wala kayo ng ram, puha na kayo ng turtle dove, mag, magsasacrifice kayo ng, ng walang pagmamahal. You shall love Him. You shall do it with love. Because He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He saved us from the bondage that we had with Egypt. He, he, he freed us from that slavery. So sabi rito, in these words that I command you today, shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. God is saying, do everything you can, do everything so that they will know me. Okay? Now, teka, pastor, Old Testament yan eh. Na naman, ano yan eh. Do you think the principle stopped when Jesus returned? Kita natin ang, 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 ang mundo ngayon. Ang pagkalaganap ng kasamaan ngayon. Sa so, tingin ba natin, hindi nag-a-apply ito? kakamali tayo mga kapatid no uh, tayo as as parents na pag-aralan natin no sa sa previous lectures na meron tayong tinatawag na para, para in a way we can be compared to the offices of Christ not it's not an actual office but we can compare be compared to them we are like priests na tayo we have to make sure that na hindi sila na nag enjoy sa kanilang mga kasalanan, that they are corrected, that they are pointed to the Savior, that we are also uh, like prophets na kailangan ay ipinapasa natin, no? propeta, ipinapasa natin ang mensahe ng Diyos sa ating mga kabataan, sa ating mga anak. And uh, tayo rin ay parang hari kasi ini-implement natin ang ruling sa kanilang mga tahanan. And anong klaseng rule yun? Yun ay ang rule na walang kasamaan na papasok doon sa tahanan na yun. So, 
nag apply ito sa atin, mga parents. No? Whatever we do, of course, teka, pastor, napakahirap naman yan. Napakahirap gawin yan. Of course, tayo ay mga makakasalanan. Pero magandang ma-remind tayo that we, that we should, um, uh, at, in, at any point, at any time, any day, maalala natin na kailangan matutunan nila kung sino ang Diyos. In whatever way. Kung kasama man nila kayo manood ng, ng palabas, paano natin na na-educate sila patungkol sa Diyos? Pag umuulan at kumikidlat, paano natin maipapasok ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos doon sa pangyayaring yon? Kapag kumakain tayo at nag enjoy tayo sa, 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 sa masarap na inihain sa harap natin, paano natin maipapasok ang, ang providensya at provision ng Diyos sa atin. Pag gumigising tayo bawat araw, paano natin na ibabahagi ang kabutihan at ang, 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 ang new mercies every morning na ibibigay sa atin ng Diyos. Bago tayo matulog, paano natin mapapakita yung pasasalamat natin sa Diyos buong araw na, na in-spend natin. So maganda na ma- maalala natin ang mga ganitong uh, 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 scripture text no uh, para para at least ay makilala ng ating mga anak ang um, Dios Sabi ni JC Ryle You cannot make your children love the Bible none but the Holy Ghost can give us a heart to delight in the word That is true It is only the Holy Spirit who can change the heart of a person so that we that person would be so interested in the word so that that person would even just spend time and look for Jesus in the word it is only the holy spirit in fact it is also the holy spirit who illumines to us the word it doesn't just change our hearts binibigyan din niya tayo ng binibigyan din niya ng liwanag yung yung text yung bible so that maiintindihan din natin totoo yun it is the holy ghost it is the holy spirit however You can make your children acquainted with the Bible. Be sure they cannot be acquainted with that blessed book too soon or too well. Okay? So tayo, I, mothers specifically, are being used for their children. Sabi rin ni John S.C. Abbott pagdating naman sa influencing on religion pagdating sa prayers sabi ni John Abbott sa kanyang book na Mother at Home the still the still small voice of a mother's prayers rose above the noise of guilty revelry the pious mother though dead kahit patay na raw ang ina at, uh, at, ang, at ang lumaking anak ay, ay dumadaan sa kanyang struggle with sin It still continued yung mga prayers na narinig niya before. It still continued to speak in impressive rebuke to her dissolute son. So what a what what a wonderful thought, no? Na may mga epekto itong mga bagay na to sa ating kabataan, sa ating mga anak na kahit wala na ito ay naaalala nila. And take note, this affects them as well. God uses these things to change our hearts as well. So ang religion. So kailangan natin intindihin that the home is the everyday sanctuary of religious instructions, but also consistent corporate worship in the Lord's Day ay malaking impluensya ito sa ating mga anak. One of the greatest opportunities for children to know the Lord is through corporate worship. Okay? Because His people is called for corporate worship. Ang mga kabataan ay kailangang matrain ang kanilang, ang, ang kanilang mga tenga sa preaching of the Word. Of course, hindi nila yun na naiintindihan pa ngayon. Marahil ginagaya pa nila. Pero that in itself is training them train sila sa mga ganong uh, senaryo. Pag naririnig nila ang salita ng Diyos, binabasa, kinakanta, itinuturo, train ang kanilang mga tenga. But also train their, their eyes and their mouths to speak to other saints. 
Train their eyes seeing the fellowship of the saints. I-train natin sila sa ganung bagay. I-train natin sila na tipong kapag, kapag hindi linggo, tatanungin nila kailan ang Lord's Day. So first, on religion. But secondly and lastly, again, this is more like a summary. So I, I, I recommend reading a lot of these books that uh, I reference at the back. So on character, of course, malaki ang epekto ng, uh, ng mothers sa character ng kanilang anak. Hindi ito na separate from her influence on religion. Yung, her character is an expression of the love flowing from, from her understanding of the love of Christ, the gospel. Sabi ni J.C. Ryle, train up your child with all tenderness, affection, and patience. I do not mean that you are to spoil him, but I do mean that you should let him see that you love him. Love should be the silver thread that runs through all your conduct. Kindness, gentleness, long-suffering, forbearance, patience, sympathy, a willingness to enter into childish troubles, a readiness to take part in childish joys. These are the cords by which a child may be led most easily. These are the clues you must follow if you would find a way to his heart. Now, very important itong pagmamahal. Kasi we may be into worship, the teaching theology sa ating mga bata, teaching catechisms, but we forget love. Nakakalimutan natin yun. After that worship time, and then we go back to whatever, you know, uh, parang hindi tayo dumaan doon sa, sa worship time. No? Nakakalimutan natin yung pagmamahal na very important na tumatatak sa mga puso ng mga Anak. Of course, this is a challenge for, for everyone, for all of us. No? So part of the task of both parents is to dis discipline their children. Uh, we will tackle uh, more about that next week sa ating lecture na disciplining children. Now, the mother has this great opportunity to show her son what characteristics he should look for in a wife when he grows up. Uh, I, I want a wife. That's like my mother. Because yun, yun, yun yung gusto kong hanapin sa asawa. So see, the influence of a mother. The mother also has the opportunity to, to show her daughter what characteristics she should have when she gets married. So again, very important. Joel Beakey said at uh, shinare niya yung uh, how the Puritans did it. Sabi niya, the Puritans used to stress that a child is as warm wax. wax. He will bear a seal that is impressed in, on him throughout his life. They were referring to the old custom of pressing a metal seal on softened wax so that the wax took the impression of the seal. That which makes parents weep tends to make their children weep. Our children absorb the pathos, ethos, emphasis, and realities of who we are. By the grace of God, those impressions are imprinted upon them often without our being aware of it. Okay? Now, we should be aware. As we end uh, this uh, short lecture, uh, let me give some siguro, challenges for our uh, Christian mothers. Una -una, uh, devoted in the word and prayer. Uh, this is really, this is something, hindi ito madaling gawin, hindi madaling gawin motherhood, ang pagiging ina, uh, kaya kailangan kaya natin ng tulong ng Diyos. Kailangan, kailangan natin ng tulong ng Diyos. Uh, yung comfort na binibigay sa atin ng salita ng Diyos, even yung comfort knowing that we can commune with God in prayer, that us uh, devoted in prayer and in the word. Uh, sa ating mga uh, uh, fathers na tulungan ang mga mothers pagdating dito. Uh, let us be patient. We are the one who are to model the same love that Christ has done people, that Christ sanctified with His word. So, so ganun din tayong mga fathers, ganun din mga husbands sa ating mga mga Malaki rin ang influensya ng mga ama, pero 
yung yung influence ng mother sa religion at sa karak sa karak uh, it should be motivated by of course the word and in our communion with God. Kaya very important ang ating devotion sa Dios. Kaya kami hindi ako sa ano sorry Harold na wala yung connection ko. Ayan, okay na. So karamihan dito sa mga references natin are directed sa mga Christian mothers. No? Kasi aware sila, especially itong mga authors na ito, especially if you read the Puritans, especially dun sa, dun sa book ni Joel Beakin, Parenting by God's Promises, where he gave a lot of examples of Puritan fathers and mothers na napakahirap Uh, for a an unbelieving mother to raise up a a child of course si mismo si wala do sa sa realm living realm ni Jesus Christ paano niya madadala din doon ang kanyang anak sa realm na iyon walang recognition of such realm walang recognition of sin and salvation from Christ then ang pagpapalaking yon probably napapala Uh, nang na, na alam ang right at wrong na which is now defined by culture and the world napakadelikado no napakadelikado na na maraming kabataan ngayon ay lumalaki sa mga unchristian homes and ito ay katotohanan na kailangan nating malaman bakit kasi as Christians tayo ay called to to really preach the gospel to these people. Kasi maapektuhan ang mga anak. Sabi nga dito sa book na Father at Home, isinulat dito sa part na ito yung gusto how, uh, how different na isang anak ay maganda yung sinabi kasi niya dito. Sabi niya, John Abbott, O oh, unchristian mother, You are the destroyer of of whose soul the soul of your own confiding child we cannot speak less plainly this topic we plead the unparalleled wrongs of children betrayed by a mother's smile mother's kiss Satan led Adam from paradise Judas betrayed his mask but here mother leading her own far from God peace to the rebellion of worldly and storms of retribution. Sobrang bigat ng sinabi ni Don Abbot. Pero may kuhanan to. No? So if there are mothers listening right now, alam ko, teaching ito, Sunday school ito, at hindi ito yung worship preaching, pero I'll take this opportunity na kayo tumalikod sa inyong mga salanan at kayo tumapit sa Panginoong Heso Kristo. Sabi sa Hebrews ng throne, throne ng grasya ay, ay, ay accessible. Kaya accessible lamang dahil si Kristo mismo ang namatay at siya ang inihain niya. Hindi basta-basta kung ang lamb or kung anong animal, inihain niya ang kanyang sarili na patay. At itinanggap yun ng Diyos Ama. At alam natin tinanggap yun kasi siya ay nabuhay muli. So lumapit kayo sa kanya, siya lang ang salvation ng ating mga kaluluwa. No, kung meron mang mga mothers or anyone who's listening right now. Now if you are a husband who, uh, na mayroon kang unbelieving wife, uh, eto may katotohanan itong binasa natin. Uh, wag natin sayangin ang oras na ito at uh, mayroon natin ang magandang ating mga asawa at kung ikaw ay isang anak ang isang unbelieving mother. Uh, umuwi ka ngayong hapon na ito after ng Lord's Day worship mo at with joy, ipresent mo ang religion mo with joy in your heart. I-share ka na kung anong ginawa sa iyo ni Heso Kristo para, para sa kanyang kaligtasan. So magandang uh, paalala ito para sa ating lahat. no How this may affect the children. 
occupation. Now, secondly, yeah, I think nagahang yung iPad ko. Uh, secondly, cultivate a high view motherhood. Wag kayo magpap sa, sa indoctrination ng mundo, sa indoctrination ng mga films sa sinasabi sa atin. If you're a mother, you should be uh, hiwalay ka dapat sa iyong anak, magtrabaho ka. Hindi ko sinasabing mali yun or simple yun. Pero yun ang inindoctrinate sa atin para mas lalong hindi tayo magkaroon ng communication, ng relationship sa ating mga anak. Tinatanggalan natin ang ating agents o uh, the, the message of reconciliation. Cultivate a high view of motherhood sa mga mothers, even fathers. No? Karoon ng, ng renewed respect and appreciation sa motherhood. Uh, ang Diyos ay tinawa na uh, ina para palakihin. Ang kanilang palakihin at isustain ang kanilang mga physical bodies pero ginagamit din ang mga ina para sa ng kanilang katawang ritual. Sabi ni John Abbott again, you, you na naman, oh mothers, have immortal souls said to your keeping. Their destiny is in a great degree in your hands. Your ignorance or unfaithfulness may be the means of sinking them to the world of woe. Your fidelity by the blessing of God may elevate them to the mansion of heaven. You and your children may soon be ranging with angel wings the realms of blessed spirits. If you are faithful in prayer and effort to train them up for heaven. What, a, what an assurance uh, that we have, no, no, that we have that joy waiting for us when Jesus Christ returns. So cultivate a high view of motherhood. I pray that this church No, hindi lang hindi lang mga mothers lahat tayo will cultivate such a view, such a high view. Kasi kung tayong lahat, pati mga lalaki, mga ama, mga husbands, mga anak, magkakaroon ng high view nito, matutulungan natin ang bawat mothers dito sa church na ito. Tutulungan natin sila sa pag, sa sa pagpi-preach ng gospel sa kanilang mga anak at i-encourage natin ang ating mga mothers dito. Thirdly, See your children how Christ sees them. Ano nga ba? Ano nga ba ang tingin ng Diyos sa ating mga anak? Kung maaalala natin kung ano yung, ano yung heart ni Kristo sa ating mga anak, baka ma, ma, pag in-evaluate natin ang ating mga sarili, makita natin na shucks, kailangan kong ayusin ang perspective ko at ang aking uh, ginagawa sa aking tahanan. Tinan natin sa Mark chapter 10 verses 13 to 16. And they were bringing children to him. Remember this. I, uh, we had this in our Mark uh, series. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, nagalit siya sa sarili niyang mga disipulo kasi mga disciples niyang humarang sa mga ama ng mga bata na gusto lumapit kay Kristo. No, pinaggalitan niya. Sabi ni Kristo, let the children come to me. Huwag niyo silang aarangin. Do not hinder them for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Now, we should be those parents wanting to bring our children to Jesus Christ. Dalawa lang yan eh. It's either tayo yon or tayo yung mga disipulong haharang sa ating mga anak at magiging hindrance. Dalawa lang. So let us see how Christ sees the children. And tingnan pa natin doon sa last verse. And He took them in His arms and blessed them laying hands on them. May pagmamahal. No? May pagmamahal. May kalinga na galing sa Panginoong Keso Kristo. Kung si Kristo ay ganon ang tingin sa ating mga anak, paano tayo? Ganda ma-evaluate natin ang ating mga sarili. Fourthly, engage with fellow women and mothers in the local church. 
may providensya ang Panginoon sa bawat mothers. Idinian niya sa maraming difficulties ang mothers sa, church, sa bawat churches. Ibinigyan niya ng, ng, ng iba't ibang mga unique experiences ang mga mothers na marahil ay makakatulong sa mga mas nakakabatang ina dito sa church na ito. So, let us take advantage of that. Engage with fellow women and mothers in the local church. Kaya ngayon ang kagandahan eh, na hindi lang tayo ni-redeem ng Diyos mag-isa, ni-redeem tayo para mailagay tayo sa kanyang katawan where all members are working together for the glory of God. Now, as a conclusion, babasahin ko lang, medyo mahaba ito, pero napakanggad na para ma-appreciate natin lalo. No, sabi ni John Abbott, when a son leaves home and enters upon the busy world, many are the temptations which come crowding upon him. If he leaves not his mother with established principles of religion and self-control, he will most assuredly fall before these temptations. Sinasabi ni John Abbott na kung siya ay umalis na ng tahanan at hindi niya na-experience yung influence of religion mula sa kanyang ina, ay he will most assuredly fall before these temptations. To continue, he may indeed fall even after all a mother has done or can do. And he may become deeply involved in guilt but he may apparently forget every lesson he learned at home. That is true. While the influence of a mother's instructions and a mother's prayers is yet working powerfully and effectually in his heart. Marahil, there are those days. Nakakala natin na parang, okay, this, this is just a simple day. Uh, one of those days na talagang, okay, we just, read the scripture, and we just prayed for someone in the church, yun ay something na pwede niyang maalala pag siya ay lumaki, especially kapag siya ay napunta sa situation where he need to remember these things, where he needs to be reminded of the grace of God. Okay? He will think of a mother's tears when remorse keeps him awake at midnight. Or when danger threatens him with speedy arraignment at the bar of God, the thoughts of the sacredness of home will often throw bitterness into his cup of guilty pleasure and compel him to sigh for the virtue and the peace he has forsaken. What? Ano bang ginagawa ko sa buhay ko? Pag naalala ko yung aking mother na iyak ng iyak praying for me when I was a child, praying that God would quicken my spirit so that I would know and I would learn who Christ is so that I would surrender my life to, to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, ngayon ginagawa ko itong mga kasalanan na ito at ini-enjoy ko siya, pero naalala ko ang aking ina. Nung bago pa siyang mamatay, siya umiiyak. At ako'y pinagpipray niya. At araw-araw niya binpinib, sinasabi sa akin ng magandang balita. Pero nung ginagawa ko ngayon, yung sinasabi ni John Abbott, and merong, uh, may katotohanan dito. And lastly, he said, at any event, it shows the strength of maternal influence. It shows that years of wandering and of sin cannot erase from the heart the impression which a mother's instructions and a mother's prayers have left there. So see, again, be so devoted to Christ, to His Word, and to praying to the Father, mediated by the Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be devoted in word and in prayer. But also cultivate a high view of your position. It has, we can reclaim the blessedness of that commission by bringing your children up to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But also engage with fellow Christians who know more, who have lots of experiences about rearing up their children. But also see how Christ sees your children. Christ loves them in a way that he would want to hug them and they would want Christ will want your children to unhindered, joyfully coming to Him. So that ends our uh, Sunday school lecture. Our topic next week is about disciplining children.
Any questions? Questions? Hmm. Hello, Pas. Question lang po. For a family po na yung parents are unbelievers, so um, obviously yung mother... Uh, is failing dun sa in, ano, um, using her influence in leading or teaching her children uh, sa word ni God. So, um, if there's parang a providence na there's someone in the family uh, who is a believer, should that person take yung role or responsibility na yun? And if yes, ano yung considerations na kailangan? Or kung... Um, medyo na parang na na tawag dito na violate niya ba yung parang pag natitik ba niya yung parang responsibility ng parang fed, ano pagiging federal head ng man and also if not uh, what should that person do uh, that's Thank a great you. question Angge. so uh, you're saying that that person is the only only christian in the house yeah, yes po okay So, uh, kailangan ba natin hintayin na, okay, teka, responsibility yon ng federal head. Uh, then, sige, hintayin ko na lang and I'll give way. Uh, it's a responsibility of every Christian, uh, technically, to, to, to preach the gospel, to proclaim the gospel. Uh, tayo ay mga, uh, in a way, sabi nga ni Paul sa Ephesians uh, chapter 3, that we are partners with him in his ministry of the gospel. Sinabi din niya uh, sa 2 Corinthians, Uh, sinabi rin ni Paul na since na-receive natin ang message of reconciliation, we have it, we should also be spreading it. Dapat binibigay din natin ang message of reconciliation with this, the gospel. So, uh, we don't need to wait for, it. it's not a, kumbaga parang, okay, it's, the, the preaching of the gospel is not just a sole uh, responsibility of a federal husband, of a husband. Ito ay responsibilidad ng bawat isa, kristyano. Ang, ang, ang responsibility ng federal husband is to love his wife. Um, so, pas, uh, parang yung sa context po kasi kanina ng teaching is parang tuloy-tuloy po siya. So, parang hindi po siya yung ano, one time na sharing ng yes. gospel yep. dun sa, ano, sa ibang member ng family. Yep. So, um, my question is, um, ano yung mga dapat i-consider na nung person ang magtitik ng responsibility na in teaching at yung ibang members ng family kasi ano kanina nabanggit din na da parang syempre um parents yung uh, the father parang help niya dapat yung mother yep. so in a sense ay uh, yung one person na believer ano parang maybe ano parang yon ano yung dapat yung i-consider Ano yung dapat niyang i-consider? I-consider in parang teaching okay. yung mm -mm. So I think when we when we uh, kapag naisip natin yung sinasabi na okay i-proclaim natin ang gospel sa ating mga tahanan, marahil uh, majority of us think na okay it needs to be a sit okay we have to be sit sit down and it has to be a Bible study of some sort. Uh, technically hindi naman necessarily. Oh, I mean that would be good. Pero not necessarily na kailangan umabot sa ganon for you to to just to be share to be sharing the gospel. Malinaw sa sa binibigay no na even even nga yung calling sa parents na kahit anong gawin nila uh, as much as possible ay maipasok nila ang kaalaman patungkol sa Diyos. In a way, kung ang anak ang only believer doon sa bahay na yon, pwede niya rin yun magawa eh. Siya yung nakakaalam ng gospel eh. So uh kailangan ano bang kailangan niya i-consider uh, be at home and spend time with your uh, kung parents man yon na kailangan makarinig ng scripture then be with them uh, kailangan nilang marinig yon at kailangan din nilang makita yon kailangan nilang makita ang uh, ang gospel ay na isa sa buhay din ng kanilang mga anak para talagang yun ang maging testimony nila na okay ang sinishare mo sa akin ay totoo kasi nakita ko na ba, nagbago ang yung buhay Thank you, Pas. Uh, 
Pastor X, we have a question on Zoom. This is from Mike. Uh, if mothers and parents in general have a child who has strayed away from them due to problems in the past where both parties had done wrong, how does the Christian mother approach reconnecting with the child if the child does not seem to want to reconnect? Or will they be more in a waiting mode, like in the parable of the prodigal son? Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Mike. So, technically, uh, I guess marami ng uh, mode of communication ngayon para maging aktibo tayo sa reaching out. No? If that has been tried, then uh, kung ayaw talaga ng ating anak, then alam mo yung kailangan natin gawin? Uh, this is a scenario wherein uh, wala tayong control. Uh, babalik tayo doon sa kung sino ang may control. So, hihingi tayo ng tulong sa ating Diyos. No, siya lamang ang kayang uh, magbago ng puso. Kahit anong uh, iiyak natin, kahit gano'ng karami yung luha na mailabas natin, kahit gano'ng ka, 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 kalalim ang ating mga sasabihin sa ating mga anak, yung ma-remind natin ang, ang ating pagmamahal sa kanila, or even if we have asked for forgiveness, kasi sabi mo na pareho na both parties uh, were wrong, uh, Diyos lamang ang kayang magbago ng puso ng ating mga anak. So, uh, I would say na y- yung mother, uh, uh, as much as possible, ay kung, na, kung may mga opportunity, ay hindi pa rin siya tumigil doon sa kanyang pag-reach out sa kanyang anak, kahit hindi nagre-reply or what, o hindi nagpapakita. And then, samahan mo, samahan mo ng dasal. No? Uh, samahan mo ng prayer sa Panginoon kasi siya lang talaga ang kayang Uh, mag magbago ng heart ng iyong anak. Pastor, so we have another... Go ahead. Okay. Yun po sa may mandate po for all women. Is it a sin po ba if a woman desire not to have children? Uh, I would... Well, depende yan. Uh, is that motivated by hatred sa children? If that is motivated by hatred sa children and then hate, or that is a sinful anger about sa, sa children. So I guess depende yan. No? Uh, pwede namang hindi kasi feeling niya, teka baka hindi ko kakayanin. No? Kunwari may asawa sila and then after getting married, ay naisip nila na, na maybe it's, it won't be wise for now. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that it is an outright sin. But again, uh, Titingnan din natin kasi yung motivation, bakit siya umabot sa ganung conclusion. Uh, I, I, I would say, na yung sinabi kong example kanina, na kung meron siya, kasi may mga posibleng may mga ganun, na talagang ayaw sa, sa mga bata, uh, then prob- maybe it's motivated by, you know, by something else, by, by hatred toward them, uh, which is contrary sa heart ni Christ. Ang model natin dito lagi ay ang puso ni Christ sa Mark chapter 10. Let the children come to me. So. Uh, Pastor X, a similar question online is, is it, is it unchristian for a woman not to desire to be a mother? Is the calling to be a mother expected from all biologically capable married Christian women? Right. So again, uh, I would go back to the motivation kung bakit uh, uh, ayaw nun. Kasi it's actually one of the purposes of marriage. One of the purposes of marriage is procreation. No? Na yung, yung pagmamahal ng mag-asawa ay talagang maging uh, visible. No? In a way na ito ay magpo-produce ng isang human being. So it is a uh, it is one of the purposes of marriage. But Uh, I would defer doon sa ano ba yung motivation ng tao kung bakit ayaw niya magkaanak in the first place. It, is the motivation sinful? Or no? Meron po ba na specifics na ano ba yung motivation niya? I, uh, uh, Pastor Ash, I think the question is pretty basic na whatever the motivation, whatever the reason, it could be psychological, it could okay. be any reason but is it sinful for a married biologically capable 
Christian woman to, to not to want to have children. Is that sinful? Hindi ko siya masagot na ito ay sin o hindi. Kasi depende yon sa puso ng mother. Uh, it is something na hindi natin makikita externally kung ito ay... Uh, sorry, na ano ko ba yung, 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 ano, yung, yung tanong? Parang hindi ko masyado maano. So anyway, naka, I, I guess my answer is uh, nakikita kasi whether... Ma, ma, ano natin kung okay, okay, sinful ba o hindi? Kasi nasa puso talaga yon eh. Ano ba yung heart niya? Uh, she has to know na isa sa mga purposes ng marriage ay procreation. At this is something to be expected kapag sila ay mag-asawa. Okay na. Okay, thank you. Okay, any more questions? Siguro last two questions. Uh, it's already 10 na pala. Questions? Dito po, meron pa po ba rito? Okay, sige. Wala na question. Uh, next week po, ang ating, um, ang ating lecture ay about... Sige, sige. Bo, dami mong messages. Kailangan mo i-check yung messages mo. Dami mo. Oh. Ay, hindi ba siya? <laughs> Okay, 197 unread. Okay, sige. Ang, ang, ang uh, lecture po natin next week ay Disciplining Children. Uh, so, uh, after po nito, uh, pupunta na po tayo sa uh, topic na family worship. So, we'll spend a uh, couple of Sundays uh, about family worship after this lecture. Siguro before we uh, before we uh, sing our closing song, siguro on a personal note uh, coming from me, uh, gusto ko sabihin, especially sa mothers, na siguro sa, especially sa pag-aaral natin netong, netong series na ito, ako siguro nagkaroon ako ng mas renewed appreciation talaga sa mga mothers sa atin. At mas lalo pa dinagdag pa ng Panginoon Uh, in his providence, itong pandemic na to, na mas plano ko talagang siguro, uh, mas na-appreciate and gusto ko sana, especially sa mga mothers na nandito, na-encourage kayo, kasi ako mismo na-appreciate ko kayo. Ganito ka, 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 ka bigat at kaganda ang binigay na responsibility ng Panginoon sa inyo. And we are looking forward na ang mga kabataan ay silang magpapatuloy ng ministry na to, itong CHC. So napakalaki po, uh, know that we are uh, home mismo praying for you and na-appreciate po that there are times na hindi man po tayo nagkikita. Kayo pong mga nasa Zoom, I, 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 I appreciate the fact that you are there because you're taking care of your children. So I understand that. Uh, know that you are appreciated and uh, again, we're praying for you. So yun lang, uh, gusto ko kayong ma-encourage ma na ako mismo ay... Uh, ako din ay na-encourage ng inyong ministry sa inyong mga tahanan.